I want to talk to you about the number one way that churches grow. See, anything healthy grows. If you're going to be healthy and grow, then you need to find a way to get visitors to call your church home. Transfer growth is fine, but new commitments to Christ, that's what infuses your church with new life. In this video, I want to share with you my number one tip for getting guests to call your church home. I'm Mario Nieves, and I'm the founder of Thrive Church Coaching. I'm also the discipleship pastor at Christ Tabernacle, a church of 3,700 members in Glendale, Queens. And one of the greatest challenges any church faces is getting visitors to call your church home. It's the new couple whom you met after the service. He's a hardworking family man. She's an executive assistant. And you're already thinking about where can they serve? How can they help the church? I mean, they come once, maybe twice, and then they don't return. And you are left thinking, what happened? Why didn't they return? Why is it so hard to get visitors to connect? I mean, they stood when we welcomed first-time visitors. The church applauded for them. We gave them some great gifts. You as a pastor personally called them, emailed them, sent them a note card, and yet they didn't return. How can you get visitors to stick? They're coming in through the front door and sneaking out the back door of your church. And you're not sure if there's anything you can do to fix this. See, getting first-time visitors to call your church home is difficult, but it's not impossible. Over the years, I've learned some strategies that can help you retain guests at a higher rate. At one point at Christ Tabernacle, we were getting about 10% of our visitors to return. That means one out of every 10 guests were sticking around, which really means every nine guests were not returning. Then we made some adjustments. And in 2013, we experienced a jump up to 36%. That meant four out of every 10 guests were staying. I mean, our membership that year doubled to 438 new members. That was an amazing increase. So before I share with you my number one practical, easy to implement step that you can take right now, let me first give you a quick warning. Nothing can substitute for a great service. Engaging worship, transparent, relevant, appointed preaching, and the sense of God's presence are the basic elements of a great service. See, you can have the best follow-up system, but without a great service, you'll never see any success. See, the reason is simple. People are coming to church looking for something authentic. They're looking for something of substance, something that has the power to change their situations in their life. Really, people are looking to meet with God. So a great service helps people connect with God. So here's my number one tip. Are you ready? You have to think guess first. I know. Pretty simple, yet it's profoundly effective. In all your planning, decision-making, regarding the services, training your ushers and greeters, you have to ask yourself, how will this decision policy approach make our guests feel? If you want visitors, guests, to make your church home, then you have to make them feel at home. I mean, here's some things to consider. Do you know how they feel when they can't find the parking? Do you know how they feel when they enter your church? Do you know how your guests feel when an usher asks them to step out because their infant is crying? If you don't know how they feel, why not ask them? I mean, consider doing a survey or finding ways to get feedback. Or something I've done in the past is a secret shopper where I ask someone to come to our church for the first time and then ask them to give me feedback. And so here are three major pieces of feedback I got that you can put to work immediately. First, they told me that some of our ushers and welcoming teams would huddle together and not be mindful of guests. Listen, guests would be standing there while ushers were talking about the softball game the day before or the football game or what they were doing after the service. So we addressed it immediately. No more huddles. Secondly, we found that some of the language we used from the pulpit was confusing to our guests. I mean, guests did not know what was going on. Uh, we didn't explain what a tithe was. I mean, we just assumed everyone knew and took the offering. During the sermon, we made references to stories in the Bible that they had no clue about. So they missed many of the major points. I mean, we worshipped loud and, and passionately and sang songs that they didn't know. So yeah, they enjoyed the service, but they weren't able to participate. They were like fans watching a game versus players participating in a game. 
Finally, the last thing the secret shopper said was that we rushed people out of our services. It felt like we were hurting them out. And the reason was because we had another service. But if the last thing that our guests would experience was what they would remember, then the usher asking them to hurry down the stairs was not something they would want to return to. So you have to start asking the question. In every meeting, before you make a decision and a policy, the question is, how will this impact our guests? Will it help them feel at home so that eventually they can call your church home? Or will it make your guests feel excluded, unwelcomed? I mean, an easy next step is to try the secret shopper. Just four easy steps. Step one, find someone you trust that does not attend your church. I think it's best if they're not believers and have no prior church experience. And I've provided a survey that they can use to help formulate the feedback. Just click the blue link below. Step two, invite them to visit your church on a Sunday. Make sure no one knows about the secret shopper. That way you'll get your volunteers and team members most natural behavior. Step three, Set up a date to review your secret shopper's feedback. Don't be defensive. On the contrary, listen intently because you're getting feedback from the audience you're trying to connect with. Step four, present the feedback to your ministry team, staff, key leaders. During your meeting, select one area that you will focus on and work on it. Once you've tackled that one area, you can then select another area that you'd like to fix. But don't tackle more than one at a time. So if you decide to use a secret shopper, you can use the survey I've provided below. I've also provided a couple of other resources from my Attending to Belonging program. Just click the blue links below. I don't want you to continue to feel overwhelmed by the revolving door of guests. Now you've got a quick and easy to implement strategy to help close the back door. So just imagine increasing your retention of first time guests by 10%. Imagine getting more visitors calling your church home simply because you started thinking guests first. Once you've got them connected, once they're connected and you're coming, you need to decide what to do to help them grow. And we're going to talk about that in our next video where I'll introduce you to a concept I call altar to elder, which is a discipleship process that will help your visitors become attenders, attenders become members and members turn into leaders. Before we end, I'd love to hear thoughts, comments, and questions about getting guests to call your church home. So scroll down, hit the like button, and share your thoughts and challenges in regards to how to connect guests. Maybe you have a tip. Listen, I'd love to hear it. I'll be commenting also, so I'd love to hear from you. Lastly, if you found this video helpful, I'm asking, would you consider sharing it with a friend? So thank you for joining. Look out for the next video in a couple of days. See you then.